I'm sure we have all seen the population crowding that's happening near airports, with construction of buildings, antennas, and other obstacles being placed closer and closer to runways, with what seems like no regard for aviation. So in Canada, we have the Civil Aviation Daily Occurrence Reporting System, or CADORS for short. I recently came across a CADORS report from March 2023. Let me just bring it up on the screen while I read it out loud. Aviation Incident Report number 18027. Airport official advised that air ambulance flights refused to fly into the airport during evenings due to two windmills that were installed straight off the runway, affecting approach and takeoff of aircraft. The official noted that these windmills have been erected for a number of months and still have no lights, making them impossible to see in fog or dark conditions. Now, anytime we have something with grave consequences, you need to follow three questions. What did you know? When did you know it? And what did you do about it? So question number one, what did you know? Well, that two wind turbines were installed in the pathway of one of the runways. Question number two, when did you know? Well, reading this CATORS report says the occurrence date was October 5th, 2022. Question number three, what did you do about it? Well, a CATORS report was filed on March 6th, 2023, roughly five months later. There's something wrong with that. So why is this a big deal with the medevac flights in Oyen? Well, to put it simple, Oyen is the only town within about a two hour driving distance in Alberta that has a hospital and there's an ER in that hospital. So medevac flights in and out of Oyen are crucial. Now, medevac pilots don't have the luxury of being fair weather pilots. They'll often fly places at night. They'll often fly places in reduced visibility. So you get the combination of night with reduced visibility where they may be coming in a little bit lower than uh, regular circuit altitude into an area where there's two wind turbines that are unlit in the path of a runway and we got a serious problem. Now you might think that these two wind turbines are mentioned in a NOTAM, a notice to airmen for the Oyen Airport, but I'll tell you right now, they are not. The only NOTAM that's currently issued for the Oyen Airport mentions that the center of the wind turbine field is approximately five nautical miles to the southwest. It makes no mention of these two that are off on their own to the southeast in the pathway of the runway. So any pilot that's doing their due diligence by checking the weather and checking the NOTAMs and even checking the sectional charts we'll see that these wind turbines aren't even listed on the sectional charts and there's no mention of them anywhere so they'll be a surprise to someone flying in at night and in reduced visibility now my goal of this video isn't a witch hunt my goal for this video is to show that one person one aviator can affect a change my goal for this video is to have the NOTAM amended to specifically address the two wind turbines that are in the pathway of the runway so that I can hopefully prevent a pilot from dying. I don't think we can get the wind turbines moved. I think they are where they're going to be. I think the time for the community to vote no on that has already passed. I believe there was a community voting stage a few years ago for this project. It's part of the Landfine wind turbine project put on through Pattern Energy, which is a company based out of San Francisco, but that's a whole other topic. But before I get the ball rolling on all this, I need to see it from my own eyes. So I'm gonna take you along and we're gonna to go to Oyen to check out these wind turbines. Now I've got a fuel stop planned along the way. I'll have to stop in Brooks for fuel, but I've also got a little area of Alberta that I wanna show you that's just incredibly beautiful. So let's get going. Bow Island area traffic, this is Piper Tomahawk, Golf Tango, Zulu Whiskey. I'll be taxiing to runway 05 for takeoff, Bow Island traffic. Airspeed alive, engine gauge is green. Just a beautiful day. Look at the scenery and with that morning fog rolling over the horizon. I'm at 5,000. 
2,500 feet over Brooks, and you can just see the stink cloud. It doesn't come from anywhere, it's just hovering over top of Brooks. But that's typical. It's kind of like in Charlie Brown when uh, Pigpen has those stink lines coming off of them. Brooks has stink lines. You can see them by plane. Yeah, I got to show you some beautiful scenery here. This is Dinosaur Provincial Park, just northeast of Brooks, basically between Oyen and Brooks. So this is a UNESCO heritage site. It's over 500 different uh, fossils of dinosaurs that have been discovered here, including T. Rex. Traffic on 157 the Madden area. That's no one that Gulf Echo Kilo Alpha, currently five miles in northeast of Madden at 6,000, heading southwest bound for Trimbank. It's within terminal frequency not momentarily. That's a really cool area because you can see all the bald prairies basically and then the whole topography changes once you get to the Red Deer River. So I'm at the south end of this turbine project. Now I'm only about seven nautical miles to the south, southwest of the airfield here at Oyen. And I think I can see the two turbines that are the big issue and the cause of that CADORS report. You can see how these things just litter the countryside. And the issue with these things is they have lighting at the top of the mast, but it doesn't include the tips of the blades, which can stretch much further than that in altitude. So if you were to go by just the flashing red lights on the mast, you'd be cutting it really close because the blades will swing much higher than that. Oyen traffic, this is Piper Tomahawk, Golf Tango Zulu Whiskey. I'm five nautical miles to the west-southwest. I'll be planning on joining left downwind for runway 32 for a full stop landing, Oyen traffic. Now there is a NOTAM issued when you look up this airfield. Mentions that essentially the cluster of these wind turbines is approximately five nautical miles to the southwest of the airfield. Now there's no NOTAM specifically addressing the two that are in the departure path of the runway. Oh, in traffic, Tango Zulu Whiskey is entering left downwind for runway 32 for a full stop. Okay, so just check this out. So I've got the airfield here. So runway 14, so 14, is headed in that direction. Now we'll do our turn to our downwind leg. And look at this, right in line with the departure path for runway 14, 14, are these two wind turbines. Who's the genius that came up with that? And there's kind of a third just offset to the right. If you were doing a, a shallow right turn on departure, you'd go right over top of that one. So you can definitely see why air ambulances are refusing to fly into here at night. Especially because apparently those two are unlit. <laughs> I can't believe it.
And nothing in the NOTAM about those two. Boy in traffic, Tango Zoo Whiskey's turning final, runway 32 for a full stop. Now we've got no wind here, so I'll be able to actually depart on that heading and you can see for yourself how these things are right in the departure path. So I landed in Oyen, I signed the guest book. I am just in awe over the fact that there's two wind turbines installed and set up at the end of the departure path for runway 14. To me, it's just crazy. I'm going to do a walk around check of the aircraft, check the oil, check everything else on my departure. Because the wind's kind of favoring either direction right now, I'm going to depart to the south. I'll set up the GoPro on the tail, and you can see just how these wind turbines are set up. Like, it's just, it's unreal. It blows my mind. Anyways, let's go. Clear prop. Point of traffic, Tango Zulu Whiskey's backtracking, runway 14. Take off power set, engine gauge is green, and we're on the roll. So now if I maintain runway heading, take a look at those wind turbines directly in front of us. How ridiculous is that? It's no surprise that air ambulances won't fly in here. And since Oyen has a hospital, and it's one of the few airports in the area with a hospital nearby, it's uh, quite the bad planning. So now looking at the tips of the blades, I'm now clear of the elevation of those. And I'm past halfway from the end of the runway to where these wind turbines are. Absolutely terrible. So now you can imagine in reduced visibility, like if there was fog or bad weather and you got an air ambulance that has to get in to get a patient, uh, these are definitely a concern. Now we're just clear of circuit altitude now. Wow. Isn't that something? So runway heading basically slices between these two wind turbines. So what's next? Well, by the time you see this video, I will have already contacted Nav Canada in my attempt to get the NOTAM updated to reflect the placement of those two wind turbines in the way of the runway. I'll also be contacting Pattern Energy as well as the Oyen Town Council to figure out at what stage along the way could the medical and aviation communities have banded together to say no to the placement of those two wind turbines. It's my goal in navigating this process that I'll be able to impart some knowledge on other aviators that they can use in order to prevent this from happening to their airfield. 
Well, that's almost a wrap. I'm winding up to land in Bow Island. Stick around, because I got a cool announcement to make once I land here. Bow Island traffic, Tango Zulu Whiskey is joining left downwind for runway 05 for full stop, Bow Island. Bow Island traffic, Tango Zulu Whiskey is turning final, runway 05. Okay, so the big announcement to make, I've officially crossed 150 hours on my logbook. I wanna thank all my friends and family out there for supporting me through my aviation journey. I wanna thank everybody that watches this channel for your support, love reading all the comments. I can't wait to make another video. See you on the next flight. Bye for now.